Whatever we are here, it is true. Whatever we give you here, right from our studio here on Broad Street Radio, it is true. Whatever you hear us say, or you know, whatever information coming out from here, it is true. Yes, and uh, we are back again. Like I told you, uh, this is uh, the Investors Education series uh, segment. Okay, uh, uh, the segment, and here we try to share more light on what you need to know about. Uh, uh, stock market, business world, money money market, and uh, commodity market. Everything that has to do with business and has to do with making money. And uh, like I, I told you earlier, whenever you see Mr. Charles, just anywhere you see him on the road, just hold him, hug him, hold him by the legs. Yo, God, you must bless me. If not, I will not let you go. All right, so he's here to uh, you know to share my light on some. I've heard this word before. Trust me, I've heard this word over and over again. But mm-hmm. uh, I'm sure I'm here to learn what it really means. And uh, Mr. Charles, uh, over to you. Thank you very much, uh, Javon. Yes, you are very right when you say the listening public there, whenever they see me, they should ask. And of course, I will bless them. <laughs> I will bless them in terms of explaining and letting them understand it or to understand the type of investment you know, they are going into. Because as an investor, what makes you to be successful is you just need to understand the basis of the investment you are doing. So for today, like you have said, derivatives, financial derivatives, commodity derivatives, this sounds so strange to investors, but because in Broad Street Radio, this particular segment, we want to make wealth creation as simple as possible so the average investor out there as long as you've been able to invest in buying shares in buying bonds then you can also invest in derivatives but before we go into derivative investment we just need to understand what it is now you will recall that investment in securities is inherently risky. It's risky. I must tell you the fact because of the volatility. And what we say, what is volatility? Prices move up and down on a daily basis. So every trader will even tell you there is a low, there is a high. In between the high and low, there are different prices. So a, a, a security price can open at this particular price and close at a different price. So that volatility in price movement of securities, the volatility creates an uncertainty regarding future price movements. This in turn exposes the investor to risks. Incidentally, today I was in the program as part of the facilitators and one of the presenters was enterprise risk management. Of course, you can see that for risks, it's everybody's business. But of course, being champion or being um, approved by the board of directors. So, as an investor, just you even investing in ordinary shares, there is a risk involved. Now, when you want to begin to invest in derivatives, the risk is even more. But if you've been able to understand, okay, what the risk is, we're telling us your risk appetite, your risk tolerance, and you gauge it properly, then you can begin to invest in derivatives. Now, in order to minimize this risk that is involved in investing in most assets, financial experts came up with these derivatives. What is this derivatives? Derivatives are essentially contracts that derive their value from an agreed upon assets, index or commodity. Common underlying instruments include bonds, commodities, currencies, interest rate, market indices, and of course stocks. But I think I will emphasize more on stocks because our investors are more familiar with um, stocks. Now, why use derivatives? We have said as a risk management tool, prices of security.
securities fluctuate on a daily basis. So if I want to buy a security, let's say uh, GTCO shares, Dangote Cement, MTN, in three months' time, of course, no matter what the analysis I do, I will not know exactly the price of that security in three months' time. I would not know. Okay? And I need to invest in that securities. And I need to get agree on the price now. I can only do that by the use of derivatives. So why use derivatives? Let's look at the reason why we need to use derivatives. We say, well, leverage provide a capital efficient way to gain exposure to underlying assets. This creates greater volatility which amplifies gain and losses. You can see gain and losses. It didn't say only gain. So if you are investing in derivative, you must also look at the other aspect of it. Derivative allow investors to take advantage of price movement in the underlying assets. They are typically liquid and easily traded. They serve as a tool for portfolio diversification. As for portfolio managers, you can use derivative to diversify your portfolio. At the same time, to also ensure or immunize your portfolio. That is, you have as a fund manager or a portfolio manager, you want to sell a security to meet up some cash obligation. And you want to do that sale at a future date. You can agree on the price today. And when it gets to that future date, you sell at that price. So you'll be able to influence, predict your cash flow. So these are some of the uses of derivative instruments. The other benefit, okay, short selling and for users, the opportunities to benefit from downward price movement. Now, let's look at a typical example of how we can use derivative so that the average investor on in the streets will be able to understand. I will use another instrument. Let me just use the one most people are familiar with. Let me even use the Nigerian, let's say Forex. You want to buy dollar, even from your malams. Or, you know, and you know that it is in December, you will need that dollar. But you are afraid that maybe that December, there will be so much rush and the price will go up. Maybe you might not be able to afford it. You cannot come to an agreement with the people selling Forex and say, this is September, in three months time or in December, I want to buy dollar at this price. Both of you agree. You agree on the price. Now, the underlying asset there now is the forex or the dollars in the case may be. But you are agreeing on the price now. But you will deliver in three months' time. That is a forward contract. Because it is an OTC. You and the forex dealer, you agree. It's a contract between the two of you. Now, but what we are saying for exchange traded derivative, it is being traded at an organized exchange. So the problem of default. Maybe you agree with this man. I'm selling you this um, forex, this dollar. But when you get to that December, he can begin to tell you stories. But if it is done on an exchange, then you are sure of the delivery. And that's why we we'll call it futures. And SEC has approved some futures that can be traded. We have the Zenith Bank futures, Asset Bank futures, FBNH futures, and of course, Dangote Cement futures. In essence, by the time we start trading this derivative, these futures, if I want to buy, 
let me say uh, Zenith Bank futures. I want to buy Zenith Bank. And it is in December, I really want to buy it. But I'm afraid because of the price fluctuation that something might happen, the price might go so up. I said, no, I can do it using futures. So I will agree with my stockbroker. We agree on the price today. We agree. And by that December, let's say we agree, Zenith Bank, the price is um, maybe 24 naira now. We agree on that 24 naira or 25 naira, the case may be. When you get to that December, if the price goes up to about 30 or goes down to 15, I have no business with that. I will be able to buy that Zenet bank at the agreed upon price, which is uh, maybe 24 naira. If it goes up, I gain. If it goes down, of course, I lose. So that is the use of David. So by doing that, that uncertainty about the price, derivative has made it possible for that investor to acquire Zenith Bank shares at agreed upon price. And the investor will have used it to hedge any risk that is involved because you agree on the price. So that is one of the major use of derivative. Trying to reduce risk that is involved in fluctuation of price of uh, securities uh, assets. Now, who is this derivative for? Yes, like I've said, any investor can get involved, but derivatives are suited to both professional and private investors who wish to hedge as an open position or gain exposure to assets and market without necessarily holding the underlying assets. Derivatives may also be traded by speculators with the sole purpose of making profit on a, sh on a short term price movement. Yes. If, as an analyst, a speculator, you believe that um, the price of a particular security will come down, of course you can take advantage, agree on the price now, and when it gets to the future, the agreed upon time, then you take advantage of the price by, you know, buying it back. That is what they call short term selling. So private investors can involve in derivative trading. But we must warn, you need to acquire some level of knowledge. At least like what we are doing here now. You need to understand what is derivative. Understand the basis of it. Because if you look at the history of derivative, if there are no proper internal control, risk management, derivative can be very demonic. But again, we have said it is not the derivative that are demonic, but the users making use of it in a way that is not proper. We have seen a, a trader, very experienced trader, who ran down a bank because of derivative trading. The Baring Bank a bank that have uh, operated for over a hundred years was run down by a derivative trader. So there is a lot of infrastructure, a lot of risk management tools need to be put in place before we can start trading derivative. We can trade derivative of, you can have equity derivative, the one I just explained, using the ordinary shares of company. We can trade that. We can also trade currency derivative. Yes, but this time not on the streets of uh, Lagos and some other places, on a recognized exchange like the NGS platform. 
we can also trade interest rate derivative. We can also trade commodity derivative. In fact, for the farmers and those who use of, who use agricultural commodity, it is very, very good for them to make use of it. I mean, if you are a baker and you need a lot of um, wheat to do your your prepare your your bread, you know, and you know that the price of wheat fluctuates throughout the year, and that will affect your cash flow. So you want to say, okay, at this time, this is when I want to buy this wheat, and you go to agreements with the commodity provider the or merchant or the farmer and you agree on the price that in future three months time this is the price so despite the fluctuation of the price of wheat within that year you are sure of a particular price you are going to get your wheat and of course it will help you in planning your cash flow as you operate your bakery as the case so commodity even in fact, somebody has even said when oil was doing over a hundred and um, yes, over a hundred dollar per barrel, we should have had derivative contracts, future contracts. That is, we'll say, okay, this is the current price. Yes, even if it's hundred, now of course that will be based on research. If we know that the price of that commodity is going to go down in future, so even now that we are doing commodity now, the oil price roughly maybe 60 70 but if we have signed the future contract now we should be selling our oil over a hundred dollar per barrel that is futures so there is a whole lot of benefits but again like i said the average investor needs to understand what this derivative is all about and the infrastructure put in place to ensure that we don't play with the risks that is uh, involved. Yeah, so what will give investors confidence in trying to trade in this derivative? Because already in the plain vanilla, that is the ordinary market, we still have the issue of investors' confidence. And now that you are bringing a more sophisticated product, how do you want to attract investors to come in to play in this market. Again, the financial market is not only for the professionals. The average investors, whether local or foreign, have a role to play. So some of the infrastructure put in place, just like the normal markets, you have the clearing, the CSD, Central Depository, will be there to settle all trades, clear all trades, so that those who are selling will get money value, and those who are buying will have the securities uh, deposited in their accounts, their securities accounts, stockbroking accounts. So for clearing, derivatives traded on the NGX platform will be cleared via a central counterparty, a CCP. Through a process known as novation, that is the replacement of initial contract between counterparties matched within the trading engine with a new contract between CCP and each respective counterparty, making the CCP the buyer to the seller and seller to the buyer. So what we are saying here is the CCP is the counterparty to any of the trade. Is for a seller, the CCP is the buyer. For a buyer, the CCP is the seller. This is to ensure that trades do not fail. So, with that kind of infrastructure in place in the trading market structure, you will see that the issue of not delivering will be a thing of the past. So, counterparty A. Counterparty B, the counterparty trades are matched on the trading platform. The CCP becomes the counterparty to each trade. The CCP becomes buyer to the seller, it also becomes seller to the 
Baya. CCP cleared derivatives are marked to market and catch settle daily, which means that gains and losses from a day's trading are deducted or credited to an investor's account each day leading up to the expiring of the contract. So these things are marked to market. They are monitored. All contracts are marked to market at the end of the trading day at an exchange generated daily settlement price and payment and withdrawals are made to and through the gaining and losing counterparties on a daily basis. So the average investor needs to understand some of these processes because I will not advise you to go into any investment that you don't understand the basis of it. So you need to understand the basis why you are investing in this derivative. You must be focused and clear of your objective. Derivative contracts may be cash settled or physically settled. I mean, just like for the commodities, you need to settle the physical commodities. While physical settlement involves delivery of the underlining on the expiry, if it is, of course, if it is a, even if it is a security, you deliver the security to the party that is buying, and of course, you get your, your cash. While if it is a commodity, of course, you deliver the commodity <laughs> to your counterparty and of course get your cash. So a cash settle contract is settled by receiving or paying the net cash difference across counterparties at the contract expiration settlement price. So we can see that these measures are put in place to ensure that there are no field trees. So at the end of the expiration of the contract, the parties get what they've agreed. However, it does not mean that if you have a contract, you must wait till expiration. Okay? But as time goes on, by the time we begin to actually practice this derivative, we will see some of the practical implications of some of these things. Okay, so like, like we have said, the NGX exchange will be starting this derivative trading very soon. And I think tomorrow they are also, tomorrow 9th of September, they are inviting traders, investors, portfolio managers, all those who are involved to a free derivative trading seminar. Of course, through Zoom. So, get all the information from the NGS uh, website and make sure you attend that Zoom meeting, that webinar, so that you have a basic understanding of this derivative uh, trading. We have just discussed just only one aspect of derivative, which is futures. There is also another contract, which is option. There is also swap, okay, but it is good to go gradually. So derivative, financial derivatives especially, have evolved as a mechanism for reducing the risks involved in financial investment. It's just a risk management tool to ensure that you reduce the risks involved when you are investing in financial instruments. So we should prepare ourselves. As an investor, please get in touch with your stock broker and say, look, this new product that is coming to the market, how do I take advantage of it? How do I get involved? And demand from your financial advisor, your stockbroker, demand from, from, from him or her to take you through the basis of these derivatives. 
What is the strike price? Why am I investing in this particular derivative? Of course, you know your objective. You want to take advantage of price movement. But you must understand that this investment comes with its own risks. In case price do not go your way. So you must, like I usually advise, you must assess your risk appetite. The amount of risk you can take, your risk tolerance. Once you understand that very well, then derivative investment is the place to be. And as we continue to speak on investors' education, if there are questions, there are comments, you want to get clarification, we are here at Broad Street Radio to give those clarifications because our aim is to ensure that investors get the right information, investors are able to benefit from investing in this product, and at the same time derive the maximum benefits they can get with minimal risk. Because so that's the aim of every portfolio manager. You want to get maximum return and of course minimal risk. I will not tell you there are no risks involved. There are risks involved, but you just need to identify those risks and see whether is the type of risk that is within your risk tolerance or risk appetite that you can take and begin to invest. Like I've also said, even in investment 101, investment in securities is not for everybody. But we are saying for plain vanilla, the average investor can take advantage and invest. So derivative is not that uh, sophisticated financial engineering that we have been made to believe. It is just a very simple tool to mitigate risks concerning fluctuation in movement of asset prices, security prices. And it is the duty of any investor to involve time, effort to understand the basis of derivatives. So today, we've been able to look at futures, and we have said our regulator, SEC, has been able to, has given approval for some contracts to be traded, and we have said, I think Zenith Bank futures, Access Bank futures, FBNH futures, and of course, uh, Dangote Cement futures. But I think we also have MTN futures too, that has also been uh, approved. You can get all these details on the NGSM website. Thank you. All right, so in case you are wondering what is the NGS website, uh, it's very simple. Just log on to www.ngx as in, X, as in uh, saxophone. Yes, ngsgroup.com. All right, and uh, I'll be sure to find all the information you need. And uh, like I told you before, whenever you see Mr. Charles, just grab him by the leg and uh, you know, tell him to just like his, uh, the blind man said, I will never let you go unless you bless me. All right, so just do the same to him. But his own blessings are the type that will give you the knowledge you need to excel in your business. And uh, and even if you want to take risk, you take the one the Oyibo is called uh, calculated uh, risk. And like, I, you, trust me, you will never go wrong uh, with. Uh, Mr. Charles. So, Charles, thank you very much for this uh, enlightenment. Yeah, thank um, you. Like I said, I've heard the word derivative before. Mm -hmm. But, you know, people just say it and uh, hear it. You really don't understand uh, the in-depth. Yeah, that's true. Just like you've explained, you know, why you use derivative, who is derivative for. And, uh, you know, so these are what you get only from Broad Street Radio you know, one business radio. All right, uh, still to, uh, still to come. While well, we have uh, the callover uh, coming up shortly, and uh, like uh, I will just advise you stay tuned and uh, 
keep listening enjoy a few music from us here and uh to keep you warm to keep you entertained uh, if you are there at the office you're trying to wind away your time you know looking at the clock and you're saying oh uh, we're going home very soon yes we are here to keep you locked down and to give you the groove you need to drive you down not just the groove but the edutainment to drive you down through the evening all right uh, enjoy this word from fino It's called uh, you know connect and uh, we are here to connect you with all the information you need to give you the right choice don't go anywhere brush the radio will be right back <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. 